Okay, folks, uh, YouTube, I mean, bazillions of dollars in a major software company, I'm sure, and I'm not complaining about that. So basically, it just all goes back to Kerasoft, civilian and the military side. Hello, love everything you do. Uh, civilian side, everybody knows who Beano Black is. So to the civilian side of Kerasoft, kiss my lily white ass 24-7, okay? Kerasoft, military side, beautiful job. Now, on... And they probably swap people back and forth. It kisses their ass one day and, and bites us in the butt the next. Whatever. So now, what we got here is freedom of speech comments I put on there. Because basically, so anyway, this probably will never, I might even privatize it for certain people that have basically been congenial through Dutch Sense for a long time if they don't uh, upload it. And I'll try to upload it again. But as you see, they using software excuses and so forth and so on so more truth and data to piss everybody off because everybody hates the truth ladies and gentlemen so let's take a look now if you're regular or if you're new then we're in canada uh yeah canada french uh camera i believe webcam action uh and there's all kinds over there and it's most all of them are grouped together with uh, american money nasa other countries and everything. Now, what I'm doing is I'm hitting the player here to get you to look and see that the idea that we have floppers and triangulation and fast spinning moving planets and so forth and so and such. You can see all the darkness and what they are is shades in front of the sun. Now, I'm going to get over here and let this play. Now, you see this, that we got this one, and if you watch this really closely right here to the right, it's a fast turning one with a lot of objects around it. And yes, th there's going to be a lot of storms. Well, I know exactly which one that is and everything like that. Okay, that's fine. I don't care to get into each exactly little name for each one, a little one. I'm just pointing it out, okay? So if you want to put something to comment in, a lot of comments they don't like to have come up. Now, we do know. Now, you watch. I just messed it up on the video, so let me hit back to play again and make, and I can comment and talk. Now, I'll move up and get the bar to go away, hopefully. There, there we go. Now, see to the very low right, above, right above the clock, we have a very fast mover triangulation and so forth, and I believe it's what we have up, which we're going to show like a picture of Mars of what I got down. I know I'm not going to get into dates and stuff like that, because you'll see it when I show it. I think it's a 7th or 8th, something like that. So, above the clock, you can see a fast mover and triangulation there of some orbitals shadows that are out in front of the sun and I think basically it'll match up to what we've seen before that we know and we keep seeing moving around in, in a vast area of space. So look above the clock and you'll see the shadows we're talking about. Okay, and then also you can't miss the the, the big diamonds in the sky. Okay, that's where the Beatles probably got the song because they you know, connections, money, they probably got to look through a telescope and stuff like that. Astronomers and money to get together, a drink Probably smoke a doobie, talk about and see what's look, look, look out in space. This stuff's out of diamonds, uh, whatever. There's all kinds of movie uh, songs and stuff like that. Diamonds in the sky, stars. Okay, so basically I've been playing back and forth, repetitive here, but we know all, most everybody's seen these triangulations and these stars and these fast rotators. Okay, so now basically I'm just like with you, watching the data and see what we end up with. And at the cloud cam, we still have the asteroid belt and so forth so showing up. If you watch camera four, which is basically an infrared telescope for, I believe, NASA. As I showed in the video before this that I was showing you that they haven't shown. Now, you, if you know, let's take a look at the clock. That is not the sun. And I, I maybe I'll get time on here or not to pull up the deal, but enough people were telling me to go look what I've already showed before in the past, stuff like that. I do not believe this. I believe it's to be more than likely back to the same kind of action we had before, that that's not the moon, it's not this, it's not that, not everything. Now, I could be wrong on that. I don't care because the idea that when we did see this stuff before, it was, it was the moon, but it was a combination of the moon in either Jupiter, Venus, at different times. But way early where we found it and seen all the action was the fact that, and as you see, I wonder if we had to end up having the meatball slip down again again there real fast. Hang on, maybe you had it come down and drop down and give us a view again. I'm, I'm just clicking back just a little bit. And there you go. There's the meatball more than likely again, ladies and gentlemen, because as you see, that's n too large to be a and we've blown totally, everybody knows that Bino has totally blown this inner, stair, inner th camera flare craft, all the shit. So more than likely we're probably getting a good look at the meatball again. Okay? Because it's at night time out the back door in the dark, ladies and gentlemen, in the darkness of space, okay? So, 
that's why everybody was getting excited to tell me to look again. So basically, it's never probably went away, or if it does, it goes out of its whatever it's got for rotation. And there's certain things that are very interesting out there that they don't have the normal. I'm not going to get into technical lingo, but there's words that I even somewhat know, but I'm not. I'm not. I'm trying to just get dialogue in here real fast. And there she'll be again, the meatball right up there behind. Okay. So more than likely, we may be getting a glimpse way out into stuff that's dead stars in the super giants and getting a real good look at them now you got to remember that the this is up at like 13,000 feet i think that's why they put the telescopes there in hawaii and there you go big old meatball so and we kind of figured we'd get this and stuff like that i think i mean and i'm not a, i'm basically a pretty damn decent astronomer and astrologer and i did not stay at a motel hotel last night okay and i'm not going to plug the brand okay but I started looking at all this stuff in uh, January, February, March, right after Fuka Fudge, you know, started paying attention to Fuka Fudge, what's going on. I mean, I'm like, you know, shit, I know about radiation and stuff like that, nuclear power plants, electricity, and then like, and then started getting, uh, you know, looking into uh, space and seeing about weather and shit like that, because I already knew about weather propagation from Dutch and so forth and so on, so... It's re interesting to keep looking at it, you know, because, I mean, it's not like you see it every flipping day. And it's the big old meatball in the dark, ladies and gentlemen, one of them. It's one of it's more than likely one of the M's, the M45, M50, something like that. One of them, there's a lot of M's. They're masses. They're dark mass dwarf stars. If you watch the video before this, and I can even go to the data real fast. So there's the meatball going away, ladies and gentlemen. That is not a flipping lens flare, okay? And it's not a hologram of what that little baby sun that we've seen coming around, which is more than likely well, somewhere along with Pleiades or Rigel Kataris A, B. It's super giant star action, ladies and gentlemen. And there you go. There's the meatball in the dark. Backside of, away from, on our shaded side of Earth when we're not facing, on the other side that's not facing the sun and the super giants. Okay, so let's go to some... Uh, I guess let this play out real fast, and we'll see if we f pop into anything else, but it shouldn't be anything else interesting. That's the most interesting is the meatball and stuff like that. I'll be able to pop and show you that the asteroid belt is still sitting on the other webcam. It's going to be there all the time, and that's probably the in positioning of certain ones, and you'll see some of the supergiant suns glistening off the back of the telescopes <coughs> in the early hours and stuff like that. So as soon as this quits, I'm going to plop over to player and show you the latest video on, on that webcam that will show you the the asteroid belt and like you know astronomers and and astronomers there's no apologies because the idea that you can take the time and even kind of know that that's your profession and you'll go in i'm a professional asshole electrician and you can go ahead and go into the idea of doing your dialogue exactly what some names are and stuff like that then just put it put on the comments hey it's got footage of this and it's that and, blah, blah, blah. and then uh i'll get a little bit more data education on names and stuff. Like I say, I don't really even give a crap most of the time what constellation's name is. Now you'll see on the back side here in the early hour that you got super giant sunlight or doesn't matter, illumination off other planets from the super giants as you see them glistening off the back of, because the window is not open to these telescopes, okay, as you see that. And it's not the car coming up the hill because the headlights don't get that high, okay. And the road doesn't go straight up to it swerves back and forth and everything, so you see movement, okay? So those are not headlights, okay? So the sun, suns of the supergiants are glistening in the back side, okay, on the back of both of the, uh, of the telescopes. As you see that, it's another telescope over there to the right, okay? So at nighttime, that is not the flipping moon, okay? It's a combination of supergiant sun stars that rise and set at certain different times or just basically actually there's a lot of stars that just sit there in the supergiants main sequence also and do not rise and fall and as you can see the asteroid belts right there above the telescope glistening away with the fast moving in uh twisters so enough on this video because basically you can see it right above the dome and it spreads out along the sky over here to the right and up and over to there okay and it may end up being confirmed that it's the supergiant's main sequence, basically. Not just an asteroid, but we'll end up finding out about that in the future on all that kind of location. I wanted to check out on BP's video. I'll go into his site here real fast. And I apologize, BP, if I'm showing something I shouldn't be showing. I didn't take time to see if it was... Uh, but he's got some good international space footage here of an object out in space. And it's probably not going to play very good because I don't care. It's playing. Now, we can tell that there's rotation on this thing. 
and it's probably the same one that the idea that the Chinese uh, satellite or their space station ended up seeing on its way up to its positioning up by Mars. Okay, so this is close down by Earth, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I am taking a wild shot in the dark at a guess, a magical guess, presumption that this could have been the 3,000 something kilometer by 3,000 something kilometer and actually that I apologize that could, that could have been meters but if you take the 3,000 something meters times the 3,000 something meters of the fast object that I said that was coming around that was pretty large this actually might have been it okay this would be something way bigger than Vesta I think or dang close it doesn't matter about too much about the size you see it there okay and but you can see that it also rotates okay so now remember we've got Oricus or Orca or whatever NASA or whatever they want to change the names of it and so forth and so on. Uh, now I could be wrong and this could be the flipping moon getting a shot there ladies and gentlemen okay but you have to pay attention to the dialogue go to BP oil disasters uh, website I'll see if I can put his link in here but if basically if you put that into YouTube's research you should end up with BP oil disasters website and I'll show his heading on here and if he wants to complain and not show but he does a great job because he's usually watching a lot of stuff that I watch but I don't get time to look at the International Space Station all the time it's you have to have patience to watch this and catch stuff okay and he does a real good job and all of his other people that basically I don't have bots but I somewhat do and I apologize and I want to say thanks to everybody that ends up catching video and I don't use BP as a bot I guess but if you want to consider it that way, but see people see stuff and people send me it's like, hey, check this out. It's what you were showing us before, and then the moon. And because I, I'm interested in so much stuff out there, because these are all gigantic motors moving through space, ladies and gentlemen. They're rotating. There's electrical energy off anything that causes friction, either in space, our atmosphere, Earth, the sun. It's all very interesting to an electrician. Okay biggest motors you're ever going to see, okay, because I've seen and worked on some of the largest motors on the face of the flipping earth, okay, so, now, big electrical motors, ladies and gentlemen, yep, mining and so forth and so on, okay, now, uh, in big oil companies that make gigantic motors trying to make more equipment and massive money monopolations, okay, so, yes, motors that have walkways, folks, ladies and gentlemen, up to like a quarter of a mile, huge motors that you're never even going to see a picture of. Okay, so this is very interesting, that object there. Okay, so is this rising setting? Is it one of our extra moons, or is this one of the ones that came by? And as you can see uh, from this footage, that thing is moving pretty fast. Okay, because the space station, I think, is probably moving away on this shot. And also, it's moving away the other opposite direction. Okay, rotating around. And this is the Earth over here, folks. That's the Earth. Okay. So thanks, BP, and I'll just show your header real fast, and there's BP's site, and that's what I got for an address for him up there, okay? And he's 9-11 was an inside job he's got in there, but that's him, BP, Oilers, Zatter's channel. Keep an eye on what he ends up watching, and do not keep an eye or listen to anything he says, because he's just a flipping puppet. It's a recent shot, and we still have all this stuff up here, and we figure that's those shadows that we're seeing in Hawaii. Let's take a look at that. Okay, and then we'll move into a thousand real fast, okay? And we also have back over here this one here. So and it's got all that triangulation and that's the stuff. And this is where the sun's at back over here. So that's all these shadows that we get over here onto Earth. Okay? Those dark shadows in front of the sun. And as the sun goes down and we get that night shot, then those shadows go away just before it gets dark, okay? And uh apologize for that little dare in the deal. We'll see if we can get rid of that. So as we see we get that interesting circular and that's probably our interesting circular shadows that we had in the lower right above the camera, i.e. And then also, I'm not sure if it's the same grouping, but this idea that you'll see the movement and it's massive, because more than likely either that group is this over here that you see there, or we also still have this, but it's up by Mars. Check that out. Freeze that. So as you see, rotation-wise, it rotates around the suns and the supergiants, and it's over with us, Mars, and everything like that. So as you see there, all that cluster and that group there. So as you see, it's way far away from us because it's out even farther than Mars, okay? So there's Earth, okay? So here you got a blow up, and that's more than likely our diamond that we're ending up seeing all the time down there on the right-hand side also. As you see, and like I say, that's more than likely the diamond that we're ending up seeing on the dark portion 
over on the other side of the shot. So let's go back to the clouds and then go back to the beginning of the video and you'll remember what I'm talking about is when we're seeing these shadows because it's basically that big formation there. And then let's pop this down real fast to like 100 and that's basically that right up there by Mars, okay? So let's check this out. And we've got what's well, probably at Antarctica too. There's our little baby sun stars right down here. You want to check out the next one?